Grace Luanga channel for free meteorology and uh, navigation instruments lessons. Welcome, my esteemed viewers. Welcome to lesson four of airplane navigation instruments, a program run by Grace Luanga. YouTube channel. Grace Luanga. For those watching for the first time, my name is Grace Luanga and my profile has already been given in lesson one presentation. As a reminder, in lesson three, we were looking at altimeters and design, a subtopic of instruments topic. Ultimeter and pressure data. I am delighted, therefore, to discuss with you today another topic from the same subtopic. Our topic today is called Ultimeter and Pressure Data. By data, I don't mean the singular of the word data, but I refer to the initial boundary pressure references of an ultimeter. We thus have this simple relationship between the pressure setting and the altimeter indication. 1013.2 millibars gives flight levels. A QNH setting gives altitude. A QFE setting gives height above the runway. These terms are not interchangeable they must always be used in their correct sense. Introduction. Ultimeter and uh, pressure data is one of the most interesting submenus in a pressure ultimeter item because it enables you to set all ultimeters according to the fine integral equations and of course if you know finite integral equations you can also solve ultimately exam questions therefore I believe that this lesson 4 will be beneficial to all of us objectives of the lesson. By the end of the lesson, the viewer should be familiar with the following pressure data ultimately. Height, altitude, flight level, otherwise known as pressure altitude, exam formulas, places of lowest QNH in the world places of the highest QNH in the world. You can get a local altimeter setting during flight by listening to a nearby METAR that's broadcast over like an ATIS or an AWAS frequency or something like that. Additionally, every time you 
contact air traffic control or every time you get a handoff to talk to a new air traffic controller on initial contact the first thing that controller will tell you is the altimeter setting for the area you're flying in so that's a way to sync up all the aircraft that that controller is working so that all of them are running off the same altimeter setting so that they're not at varying altitudes. Stomach so approach, Cessna 6155 Kilo is 3,000 feet to Hagerstown. 6155 Kilo, Roger, maintain VFR, double sound altimeter 3022. Details of the definitions. Altitude. Altitude is the vertical distance of a movable object above the mean sea level, called the QNH altimeter setting. Sometimes it can be referred to as the true altitude. Elevation. Elevation is the vertical distance of a fixed object, e.g. the runway, above the mean sea level. Height. Height is the vertical distance of an object above a fixed datum, e.g. the runway, the control tower. If the ultimate is set to aerodrome QFE, then it will read zero on the tarmac. Flight level. Flight level, that is FL, is the same thing as the pressure altitude. The altimeter reads flight level when the International Standard Atmosphere, that is ESA, reference datum or QNH setting is 1013.25 millibar. In meteorology, pressure altitude is the upper air height, e.g. 300 millibar is equal to 33,000 feet. Exam formulas. Flight level is equal to aerodrome elevation plus 1013 minus QNH times 30. If we, if we assume 1 millibar is equal to 30 feet, then the relationship between QFE and the QNH is given by QFE is equal to QNH minus aerodrome elevation divided by 30. First, let's start with some basic definitions so that we use the correct terminology. Altitude, when used on its own, without any qualifying prefix, such as density altitude or pressure altitude, means the vertical distance of a movable object above mean sea level. Elevation uses the same datum as altitude, but the difference is that elevation is the vertical distance of a fixed object above mean sea level. By fixed object, we normally mean the ground. Therefore, elevation in this case is referring to the vertical distance of this runway above the sea. Elevations can be negative. Amsterdam Schiphol Airport, for instance, is 11 feet below mean sea level and so has an elevation of minus 11. Height is the vertical distance of an object above a fixed datum. In this example, the aircraft has a height above the airport underneath it. Height is always less than altitude unless the elevation is negative. However, height can refer to either movable objects, such as aircraft, or fixed objects, such as this control tower. Flight level is something different. Flight level is also known as pressure altitude. It is a pressure difference between that experienced by an aircraft and a datum pressure level of 1013 hectopascals. It is converted using the ISA atmosphere relationship and expressed in feet. Practical applications. Altitude. The altimeter reads altitude when the setting is QNH. QNH applies to a wider area than QFE. In the whole world, QNH varies between 950 millibar and 1050 millibar from day to day and hour to hour. When there is fog, terrain, low cloud or towers in the vicinity of the aerodrome, then it is important to use the altitude. 
flight levels. For flights outside the ultimate setting region, all pilots are advised to use the flight levels or QLE setting in order to avoid head-on collisions. Heights For flights intending to land or take off from an aerodrome, all pilots are advised to use height or QFE of that aerodrome in order to avoid crash landing and obstacle collisions. If we are near the ground and there is a danger of collision into terrain, the answer is obvious. Of course we should. Especially in fog and low cloud. The vertical distance of hills, mountains, ridges and tall structures is given as an elevation on our maps. We need to know our true altitude in order to ensure safe clearance. We must make sea level our datum by setting the subscale correctly. But what if we are high enough to be in no danger from terrain? In this case, it is more important to avoid colliding with other aircraft. We require vertical separation. We have a procedure to deal with this. Once safely away from high ground, both aircraft set 1013 as a datum and do not make any correction for temperature. We call this flight levels. This aircraft is told to fly at flight level 70. This means 7,000 feet on 1013. This aircraft is told to fly at flight level 80. This is 8,000 feet on 1013. They will still have 1,000 feet vertical separation. Their true altitude doesn't matter, as long as there is no danger of either of them hitting the ground. QFE is defined as the atmospheric pressure at the aerodrome elevation. It is the subscale setting that will cause the altimeter to read zero when the aircraft is on the ground. Zero datum is the airport elevation, not sea level. Effectively, this gives the pilot his height above touchdown. QNH is the subscale setting that will cause the altimeter to read the airport elevation when the aircraft is at touchdown. Broadly, it gives a pilot his altitude above mean sea level. Standard pressure setting, or 1013, is what we set when required to fly flight levels. Flight levels are always given in hundreds of feet, and usually only five hundreds and whole thousands of feet are used. QFE is used for most PPL training. It is easy to understand, and it looks normal to most beginners to see zero on the altimeter when you are on the runway. Places of lowest QNH in the world. Netherlands is one of the places of lowest QNH in the world. One of the reasons is that much of the Netherlands, including Amsterdam, is already below sea level. Its average elevation is 9 meters or 30 feet below sea level. Another reason is that Netherlands is under the influence of a quasi-stationary low-pressure system. The Netherlands law, therefore, often attains a sea level pressure below 950 millibars. A super-sized upgrade. With more than 36 million cubic meters of material needed to span the 32 kilometer mouth of the Zandersee. While many minor upgrades and improvements have been made to the dike in the years since, Rising sea levels and an increase in the frequency and ferocity of storms has left it in need of reinforcement, and 2019 saw the start of a major strategy project. The clever reinforcement of this 1920s seawall, enabled by 2020s technology, is likely to prove a powerful example to other countries in the years ahead, as our planet grapples with a changing climate. Places of highest QNH in the world. Siberia is one of the places 
of highest UNH in the world. One of the reasons is that much of Siberia is under the influence of a quasi-stationary high-pressure system centered on Lake Baikal. The Siberian high, therefore, often attains a sea level pressure above 1050 millibars. Lake Baikal is one of the largest, deepest, and clearest lakes in the world. And Okohon Island is one of the biggest lake islands. Book. The following CPL question was set by CAA and it is available in a book Meteorology for Airplane Navigation Instruments by Chris Luanga. Question A. An aircraft is at flight level 80. The original QNH is 990 millibars. What approximate clearance has the aircraft over ground, which is 4,187 feet above mean sea level? Assume 1 millibar is equal to 30 feet. B. Give two reasons. Apart from the altimeter being subject to instrument and pressure errors, why in answer A you are only able to give the approximate clearance? Landing charts indicate the height of obstacles in the vicinity of the aerodrome. The altimeter is provided with an adjustable pressure scale. If it is set to 1013.2, the altimeter will indicate zero height at flight level zero. The pilot, therefore, radios the nearest ground station and asks to be supplied with this information. At the ground station, an observer computes this mean sea level pressure. For example, he may find that it is 1,030 millibars. This pressure reading is called a QNH. It is radioed back to the pilot, who resets his altimeter to the QNH setting. As before, he obtains this pressure setting from an observer at the aerodrome. In this instance, it is 933 millibars. This pressure setting, called a QFE, is transmitted to the aircraft. As before, the pilot adjusts the pressure scale on his altimeter. Time. Viewers, because of time, the desk altitude and uh, true altitude char characteristics cannot be covered here but they will be covered 
in another lesson shortly. Many thanks to all of you who have uh, shared your video and uh, sound clips with me in order to make the lesson a success. Try to solve that uh, CPL question and I will correct your answer. Meanwhile, if you have any message, you can send me an email or SMS. I am always available 24-7. Subscribe and benefit more from our channel. As I look forward to meeting you, I beg you to stop here. Thank you very much for watching me and God bless you. Hi guys. I'm Kyun and I grew up in the coldest town on earth, Yakutsk. Many people were asking me how do we survive during the winter when the temperature is going down to minus 60 degrees by Celsius. So in this video I want to talk about some interesting facts about living in the coldest place on earth, Yakutia. So when the winter lasts 7 months and the temperature is going down to minus 60 degrees by Celsius, uh, I think it's incredibly interesting because the human being can adapt any environment. So when I introduce myself as uh, that I am from Russia, many people are wondering why do I look Asian. So let me introduce about my region, uh, the history of Yakutian people and our culture and religions. So in the following centuries, the Yakut people were spread over the vast northeastern region of Siberia. So in Yakutia, uh, all of the people are bilingual, they speak Russian and they also speak Saha language. We have also own religion, which is a mix of shamanism and Eastern Orthodoxy. So our religion has a lot of interesting things. We believe in the soul spirit, which lives in the forest, in the trees, in the river, in the rocks in the natural forces. So every year uh, on 19th of January, people, they submerge themselves in ice cold lakes and rivers at minus 60 degrees to celebrate the baptism of Jesus. So, so Yakutia is one of the expensive regions in Russia. And it's also one of the richest regions in the world in terms of the natural resources. One of the hidden gem of Yakutia, it's a Blues Glacier. The Blues Glacier is surrounded by pristine pine forest and lush green meadows. The ice doesn't melt even during exceptionally hot summers. So it's a fantastic place to be there uh, during the hot summer days. But unfortunately, this summer for Yakutia is a disaster. This summer, the forest fires already burned more than 1.5 million hectares. Also have released a thick, toxic smoke, which my family is choking every day. I also made a video about wildfires in Siberia. So I hope you will watch this video. So I hope you like this video and Yakutia open it up from the different sides. Welcome everyone to visit Yakutia and I'm sure that you will definitely love it. Thanks for your watching. Bye-bye.